Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Ari Views back with another video and today we're talking about iOS 15 and all of its new features and changes. So in this video, I will show you guys more than 160 new features and changes that you will find on your device running on iOS 15 beta 1. Now, before we get into the video, make sure to leave a like on this video. It helps out a lot for this video to do much, much better. So make sure you smash that like button. Starting things off with the lock screen. For the first time on iOS, you will be able to have access to the spotlight search directly from the lock screen without having to unlock your device. Just swipe right there and you will be able to actually have access to your spotlight search. Now, if you have one of the new focus modes enabled on your device running on iOS 15, on the lock screen, you will see that icon right there, which indicates whichever mode you have turned on. Now, by touching on it, basically 3D touching on it, it will show you all other modes. And of course, you can switch between them directly from here, from the lock screen without having to unlock your device. Moving on to the notification center. First of all, you will see here a new look on the notification center thinner banners and bigger icons for the apps. What you get here is also options. So if you swipe on a notification like this and tap on options, then you will get here quite a lot of new options. You will get an option to mute for an hour or mute for a day. Basically, you will mute the notifications from that app or you can send them to the new summary feature, which we will talk about in a bit. Then you have also configure in podcast. So you can basically configure the notification settings within the app. You can view its settings and turn off notifications for that app directly from here. Now, if you tap here, it will take you directly to the notifications of that app and you can continue editing them from here. Moving on to the home screen and here you will find some very useful changes. First of all, when you go to edit your pages, this has been updated now and it has more features. On iOS 14, all you could do here is enable or disable a page. But now you can also rearrange them, just drag them like this and rearrange them any way you like. And if you have a page disabled, then it will show you the minus button right there, which actually lets you just go ahead, tap on it and remove that page completely. And all of the apps that are on that page will automatically be moved to the app library. Apple has added the drag and drop feature to iOS. So all you gotta do is just drag something and you can drop it on another app. So for example, this text right here, I can go ahead and just select it, drag it right here and I can just move it to an email just like this. Or if I wanna add a picture here, I go to the Photos app and simply drag an image like this. I can go out of the Photos app and just release it and add it to this email. That works really good. And of course you can drag and drop between apps, things like text, maybe even files, pictures, or videos. Apple has introduced live text with iOS 15. It basically recognizes text on pictures and lets you use it just like normal text. And that works also on screenshots. If I take a screenshot right here, you can see that little indicator. I can tap on it and it will show me all the text that it will recognize on this picture, actually on the screenshot. And I can, of course, just tap on any of that text and copy it from here. This is really, really good, a very nice feature to have. And you can see, you can just go ahead and simply select any text, even though it is still a picture. Now, something really interesting that you can do on iOS 15 is that you can have the same app on different pages. I don't know if this is a bug or it's actually a feature, but you can see here I have YouTube and I can just go ahead, go to the app library and drag YouTube again. And I can have two different icons for YouTube right here, or maybe just add it on another page. This might be a bug actually, but it looks kind of cool. Hopefully it is a feature. A very cool thing you can do on iOS 15 is that you can actually search for apps on the spotlight search and then drag them and add them to the home screen of your device. So if you want to do that, that will be very, very easy. And it's much easier than trying to find them on app library, even from series suggestions right here. When you go to your spotlight search, you will have the series suggestions and you can just basically go ahead and drag any of the apps and place it on the home screen of your device. Now from the spotlight search, you can also search and delete apps. So you 3D touch on an app and you will have the chance there to delete the app. And what you can do is also from the series suggestions, 3D touch and delete apps from here as well, which is very useful. 
on the spotlight search of your iOS 15 device, you can also search for pictures. So just search for anything you want and they will show up on the spotlight just like this. Siri on iOS 15 will work even offline. For things like setting an alarm or maybe a reminder, stuff like that, you can see I'm actually disconnected from the internet. I can just go ahead and try that out. Set an alarm for 5 p.m. And just like that, it will actually set the alarm. A very welcome change on iOS 15 is the new magnifying glass which has been added to iOS 15. So anytime you're selecting text or just moving the cursor around, you will see that new magnifying glass which actually looks pretty cool. Another thing that Apple has basically reverted on iOS 15 is the old style picker for the clock here. So whether you're setting an alarm or a timer or stuff like that, you will still see the old school one. Now on iOS 15, if you go to your control center, while being on the home screen, you can tap right here on the text and you will be able to actually zoom the home screen text from here. So really, really cool. Now, of course, you have the option to switch to all apps or home screen only, and that of course is very useful. Another very useful thing is the ability to actually translate from anywhere. So anywhere can select a text just like this. You can see I will have the option to actually go ahead and translate this text from here. That of course is very useful as well. So you can basically choose like the language here, change the language, and you will be able to also copy the translation. On the control center of iOS 15, you will find these two buttons at the top of the control center. So whenever you have recently opened an app that uses camera and mic, you will see these two. So we have video effects and you can actually enable portrait mode for videos on third party apps as well, not just FaceTime, which is basically the feature we saw at WWDC 2021. And you will have here also the mic mode. So you have the standard one, you have voice isolation and wide spectrum as well. And you can go ahead and actually just find them from here. Now, music recognition again has been updated with iOS 15. Now, if you 3D touch on it, you will see the history of the songs that it has recognized. Previously, it would just recognize the song and basically show nothing there. Now you will have the history of the songs that it has actually found. And right here, we have the new button for focus. Now, if you tap and hold here, it will show you all kinds of different modes. Of course, you can go ahead and tap the plus button if you want to add the new ones. But if you don't want to do that, you want to just quickly enable the last mode. You can just tap right there on that little icon without having to go inside of the focus menu, which again is really cool. Now, if you have this enabled, you will see the icon on the status bar of your device. You will see it on the control center. If you're on the control center, it will be on the right. When you go out of there, you will see it on the left here, just right at the clock on the status bar of your device. There have been updates for widgets as well. And also we have a lot of new widgets. Now, first of all, when you go to edit a stack of widgets, you will see a totally different look. You can see this is the new look when editing a stack of widget. You can enable here smart rotate or you can enable widget suggestions. Now, this is also a new feature. So basically, if you have that enabled on a stack of widgets, Siri will suggest you different widgets which you can add to your home screen. Basically, it will add them automatically to this stack right here. Now, going back, you can see here quite a lot of new widgets that you can add to your home screen. We have one for the sleep. We have the game center widget. So we have the recently played right here and play with friends right there. We have a new clock widget right here. So the, they used to be like cities clocks on iOS 14, those are still here, but this is a new one. This is the system clock, which basically shows the same time as your device does. Now, right here, we'll see a very useful one and that's contacts. So you can have a small one just with one contact, a medium one with four, or the bigger one with eight or six, I believe, and you can just 3D touch on it and you can choose whichever like contact you wanna see there. Tap on edit widget and just pick your contact from there, tap on it and it will show you the contact card. Of course, you can go ahead, call, message or FaceTime from here. You will see the now trending right there with the new Apple Store 
basically app store widget we have all kinds of different sizes there the medium the small and of course the big one and here's one that's really important the mail widget this right here will show you all kinds of different like mailboxes that you want to see right here I have the flagged ones i can just quickly touch on this tap on edit widget and choose whichever mailbox i want to see here maybe you want to see your unread all in boxes anything that you want to see you can see it right there you will get this medium one and you get a larger one as well and then you have here the find my you will have one for your items and you will also have one basically for your friends but it shows right now that i'm offline so these are the new widgets that apple has added with the first beta of ios 15. Moving on to the iMessage app, here we have a lot of new features as well. First of all, you can see when you send pictures, they will look totally different here. On a text, I can just 3D touch and we'll be able to actually translate that text within the app. Now, if you go ahead and tap right there at the top, you will see that little new icon. You will be able to make FaceTime video or audio call directly from the iMessage app. This one is very useful. Now the drag and drop feature of iOS 15 will also work with iMessage. If you're trying to send a picture to someone, you can actually just drag that picture from the Photos app and just go ahead and send it with iMessage. Just drop it right there and you're good to go. Now iMessage will also introduce a new feature called text from camera. So you basically tap right there to see this little menu and you tap on text from camera. It shows you the camera instead of the keyboard and you can just scan any text you want and insert it right here and then we'll be able to actually send it to someone as a text message. The Photos app on iOS 15 has gotten a lot of new features and changes, like this one right here. I can swipe up on a picture and I will see here all the different details I need to know regarding that picture. Right here you can see the time and the date it was taken. By tapping adjust it will show you right here the interface from where you can change that time. And here you have the location, this one doesn't have a location, so I can go ahead tap right there, search for a location and add it. To this picture and i have here all the different details i need to know regarding this picture it shows the device it was taken with and of course the resolution the size and everything else i need to know regarding that picture if i swipe here i have another picture and this is a cat and this is a new feature that you will see on ios 15 basically it recognizes what's on that picture and you can see if i just tap right there it will show me siri knowledge and web results regarding whatever is on that picture and that's really really awesome and of course the biggest feature of the photos app on ios 15 live text here i have a screenshot all i have to do is just tap right there and i can go ahead and actually select that text just like any normal text even though it is a picture and if you have a photo that you have saved from an app all you have to do is just swipe up and it will show you here the app it was saved from you tap right there and it will show you all the other pictures that you have saved from that same app and if you're trying to mark up a picture on ios 15 tap the edit button and now you will get the markup button right away right there you don't have to dig for that markup button anymore with ios 15. when your ios 15 device is suggesting a person a lot maybe on your memories or on your collections or stuff like that you can actually just tap the share button on a picture where that person is and just ask ios 15 to feature that person less and when you have a live picture on ios 15 you can just tap that live icon and you can change it into a loop bounce or long exposure now that menu used to be down here i will have it right there where it says live you tap that little arrow and you get the chance to change it from here the most changed app on ios 15 is actually the weather app totally different you can see this animation right there it looks really really beautiful a lot has changed with the weather app on ios 15 it looks totally different you can see here we have more information actually we have the map right here and we have these kind of cards right here that will show you all kinds of different information you need to know regarding the weather for that city now what you can do here is also open this on the maps app or if you, can, if you just tap right there on that little map icon it will actually show you the map of that city and you can switch here from temperature to other things like let's just try this here so here we have maybe the air quality it will show the map with the air quality and you can see the index right there 
really really cool and if you tap of course the dots right there you can go ahead and change between different cities and you will still also see right here the conditions on other cities that you have on your list as well now what's really good is that once you go to the list of the cities you can see these animations right here even on the cards of the cities and that of course makes the weather app look really really beautiful facetime got a lot of new changes as well now first of all what we can see here is create link you can create a link to a conversation and send it to someone and let them join to your facetime call you can start a new facetime call from here and now you get also spatial audio on facetime facetime also got voice isolation grid view when you're talking to a lot of persons and of course you can use the new portrait mode on facetime calls which is really really cool and of course with the new share play on facetime you can actually watch something or listen to music together with your friends or family while still talking to them on facetime on the files app you will find of course the new drag and drop feature you can just drag files and drop them anywhere you want on other apps there is a very cool feature that lets you swipe like this to actually select files you can quickly select a lot of files if you have like a lot of files on a page like this you can just basically swipe like that to go ahead and select the files that you want so you can see just pinch out like that and you will be able to quickly select your files on the find my you can now enable notify when left behind so whenever you leave one of your devices behind you will actually be notified there are new features to find your airpods as well so basically you don't leave them behind you will get notified and you will get a map to where your airpods are that's really really cool and now with ios 15 apple will basically the find my app will basically be able to find your iphone even though it might be turned off completely and that's a game changing feature to have on ios devices on the notes app you will find a new glyph here to create checklists so you will see it right here that's really really useful of course you can use the drag and drop feature with the notes app as well and you will be able to actually translate anything you want within the notes app just tap right there to translate and you can of course add text to notes as well with the new text from camera so again it replaces the keyboard and it basically just shows you the camera and be able to add any text that you scan from there on the notes app now you will find tags so basically you will have now a thing called smart folders so if you go ahead and go to edit you will see your folders right here you can tap the three dots and convert your folder into a smart folder which are basically organized with tags that way you can find your notes easier moving on to safari one of the apps that of course got the most new features so let's just go here to the front page first so what you get here is totally different new front page you can customize it by tapping the edit button you can enable or disable all kinds of different elements that you want to see or remove from the front page of course you will have the ability to rearrange them as well you can enable a background image you will have a few here to pick from or you can choose your own from the photo library of your device going to the tabs view you will see a grid view here which looks totally different you can close them by using the x button or you can just swipe them to the left like this you can now easily rearrange your tabs simply by dragging them and if you go to one of your basically one of your sites that you have opened and go to the landscape mode you will actually see here a totally different look so right there you will be able to actually switch quickly between your tabs on the landscape mode now while you're on the website you can swipe like this here to switch between different tabs and when you go to the last one you can actually swipe like this to add a new one so just swipe like that you can see from the last one and you will be able to add a new tab you can swipe up on a tab to go to the tabs view just like this and quickly of course change between your tabs as well now when you're on a tab you're on the website you can just 3d touch there and you can basically move them to a group you can share that tab from here or if you want to copy the link you can do that from here now if you're basically on an empty tab like this you can 3d touch and you will be able to actually add bookmarks for all the other tabs that you have opened 
there is a new share sheet as well on Safari. If you tap the three dots right there, you will see different elements right here from where you can share the website or actually reload the website. There is also a new way to reload. You just swipe down and you will see the reload wheel right there. You will be able to actually reload. You want to quickly go to the tabs. You can do that by tapping there or again, just swipe from here, swipe up and you're good to go. Now, of course, Safari will also have the new text from camera feature. So when you're entering basically a website here, you can choose text from camera. That way you can maybe just scan, like quickly scan a website that you see somewhere and open it on Safari. Now on Safari on iOS 15, you will have basically the bar right here at the bottom, not at the top. And if you tap the 3D dots, you get to the share sheet. And now is here's where you will find your actual website settings, like the hide the toolbar or request the desktop website or the website settings, which used to be right here at the top. Now you will actually find them right there at the bottom on the share sheet of the Safari on iOS 15. There are a lot of new changes on the shortcut app as well. When trying to create a new shortcut, you will see here a new interface. You can enter the shortcut name right there at the top. Here we'll find the settings of the shortcut and the setup as well. Here you can choose to add this shortcut to your home screen directly from here. You can choose whether you want to show it on the share sheet across your iOS device or not. You can choose whether you want to show it on your Apple Watch. And now when shortcuts are coming to Mac, you can basically choose to keep it on the menu bar on your Mac or use it as quick action. Now if we tap done and try to add an action to this shortcut, you will see here a total new interface as well. Right here will have your suggestions, then you have all the actions, and then you have all kinds of different categories of actions which are new with iOS 15. And if you tap on apps, you will see here a totally new interface for apps as well. And you can basically just tap one of these to show the different actions that you can go ahead and add to this shortcut from any of these apps. We have new automations as well. First of all, when you go to the automations, you will see a new interface here. This has been redesigned. Tapping on create personal automation. Now you can create automations for your focus. So you will have here do not disturb driving personal and work. You can create automations for each of those. So basically tap right there. You can choose when it's on or off what you want to do with automations. You can also create automations for sound recognition. So once sound recognitions recognizes a sound that you have turned on, it will basically run the automation that you choose and you can pick the sounds from here. And last but not least, we're moving on to the settings app and see all the new settings that you will find on iOS 15. First of all, the settings app has been redesigned and with this like card view right here, it looks much, much better. Now let's first take a look at iCloud. You can see right here we have two new sections. We have private relay and we have hide my email. If you go to hide my email, you will see a list of all the apps where you're using this feature, basically where Apple is hiding your email when you create an account on that app. And of course you can go ahead and change that if you want by going to each of these sections of each of these apps. Moving on to notifications, this is what we got here. Schedule summary. If you go right here, you will be able to actually enable scheduled summary and you have all kinds of options that you can enable as well. You can go to frequency right here and you can choose how many times you want these basically to be delivered to you. So you have from one up to 12 times a day. And then you have here scheduled summary. So basically you can schedule it summary one, summary two at which exact clock you want to have it. And then you have apps in summary. So you can choose whichever apps you want to put on the summary from here, of course, by simply enabling them from this list. Going back to notifications, you will see here Siri and you have announced notifications. If you go here, you can enable announced notifications, which basically makes Siri announce your notifications and you can choose announce when connected to your headphones. So basically Siri will connect to your headphones and basically will just notify you when you get notifications and will actually announce them to you just like it does with messages on iOS 14. So that's really, really great as well. Now we'll have here notifications from, and you have a list of all of your apps. You can go ahead and choose here from which of these apps you want Siri to announce you notifications. You enable it right here. And then of course, once you get one of the notifications from this exact app, you will be notified 
actually through your headphones. When you go back to the notifications and you go to one of your apps, you will have your new options. So you have immediate delivery. So these notifications won't go to the summary immediately will be delivered to you. And then you also have your scheduled delivery. Of course, if you want to do that, you can just choose that right there. Here you have announced notifications. And from here, you can also enable or disable announced notifications for each of these apps directly from their settings. On the settings app now you will find a new section here called focus this will basically replace do not disturb when you go here you have the presets you have do not disturb you have driving sleep personal and work which you have to set up and then you have here a button to enable this across your devices you have the focus status and you will have a list which support this basically by enabling it here for messages this will let people know about my status when they're trying to type me so here we have phone calls if you go here you can choose which phone calls can be basically delivered to you so you can enable their allow repeated calls so when you, someone calls you twice they will be allowed to call you or any from these categories right here and now right here we have a plus button if you go there you will be able to create a new focus status so you will have here custom you have fitness gaming reading as well going to custom you will basically start from scratch and create your own one going to one of these you can go ahead and just follow different steps and create your own focus from here which is actually very very useful when going to one of the statuses here that are pre-made, you can choose what you want to do. So when I go to driving, for example, I can go ahead and choose which people I want to allow to contact me and which apps I want to allow to send me notifications while I'm driving. Of course, I have here time sensitive notifications. I can enable that and of course share this on the status right here. We have while driving, you can enable this automatically, manually, or when connected to car Bluetooth, and you can also activate it with CarPlay as well. So if I go to Not Disturb right here, you can see it also has the option to customize home screen. So if I go to home screen, I can choose the custom pages which will be able while on Do Not Disturb. So here it shows me all the different pages and I can choose from them. And going back here, we have also options. So you can dim the lock screen, basically delay delivery and also hide notification badges while on do not disturb and then you have here turn on automatically you can add to here basically based on time location app etc and then right here you will have like different times you can enable this and choose for each day of the week at which time exactly you want to turn on do not disturb moving on to the general settings and let's see what's new here so we have a new section for vpn and device management so basically here we'll find your vpn connections and you will find your profiles as well which of course you can edit from here now with ios 15 when you try to install a new profile from safari it will automatically send you to the settings app and you won't have to do that manually like we had to do on ios 14 and if you tap on reset you will find here a new button to prepare for a new iphone by going to accessibility, you will find now here a new section called per app settings. Now, if you go here, you will find basically a blank list and you will have to add your apps here. So choose whichever app you want to add and then you can go ahead and choose the settings for those apps. So you will have display and text setting. You can enable the increased contracts here, of course, invert, smart invert, reduce motion and also autoplay video previews. Those can be done from here. So, of course, each of the apps will have its own settings based on these settings that you set here. Now, from here, you can edit these or you can just swipe like this if you want to delete one of them. And those settings will also be deleted. Under accessibility, you will also find a menu for your AirPods. So, if you go here at the bottom, you will now find a tone volume basically allows you to set the tone volume for your AirPods. Now, of course, under wallpaper, you will find the new wallpaper of iOS 15. It's kind of disappointing that they added just one new wallpaper, but uh, we have to deal with that. Hopefully with beta 2, we will get new ones going into Siri and search. What you will find here is also announce notifications. So you will announce notifications right here and enable headphones. So they will, of course, be announced through your headphones from there. This is also new under Siri and search. So let's go back and go under privacy right here. We'll find a new section for nearby interactions. That's new on iOS 15 as well. And scrolling all the way down, you can see here record app activity. So basically you can enable this and it will record 
all the app activity and see what data they're collecting and stuff like that. So it will have to have some time to do that. And once it's done and it shows the activity here, you can save that actually by tapping right there. You can copy it or save it under your notes. Moving on to iMessage, what we have here at the top is a new button, allow message to access and we have focus, you can enable it from here. That's the only new setting that you will find on iMessage. Moving to Safari, what we got here is auto minimize tab bar. This is the new feature of Safari on iOS 15, but that's not really huge. Extension, in my opinion, will be really huge with Safari on iOS 15. And you will find it under settings right here. And if you tap on more extension, it will actually send you to the app store and to this section that it's basically dedicated for Safari extensions and you can install them from here. So that's very, very useful as well. Now going back, you will also have the option to hide your IP address. You can turn it off from here or you can turn it on from trackers or websites, whatever option will be shown right there for you. Now, if you go to advanced, which is at the bottom here, you will also find a new button to actually never use background color in navigation bar. That's an accessibility option, which you can enable from the advanced settings of Safari, which again is really useful as well. Going to weather, you will see here a new menu to select Celsius and Fahrenheit. That's new on the settings of weather on iOS 15. Moving on to shortcuts, you will find quite a lot of new changes here. So we have private sharing, basically allow receiving shortcuts directly from people on your contacts going to advanced. You can enable, allow running scripts, allow sharing large amounts of data and also delete without confirmation and delete large amounts of data. Those are basically the new options that you can enable for the shortcuts right there. Now, going back here, we have also another really cool feature. So when you have like this list of apps here that are on your device and you go to one of them, you will find here a new button that says use biometric authentication when available. So basically use touch ID or face ID whenever an app supports it. So that way you will be able to actually easier log in into that app. So that's basically it for this video, guys. These are more than 160 new features and changes that you will find on iOS 15. That was quite a lot of work. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did and subscribe for more. I will see you guys on the next one.